Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome again to another uh, Tabernacle Baptist Church devotion. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this privilege of coming into your holy presence this morning. We realize we stand on holy ground. And so we confess straight away that we are sinners. We repent of our sin. But we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for the salvation that we have received through the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that he loved us so much and you loved us so much that he died on the cross of Calvary, that we might be saved from the punishment of sin, which is death and eternal separation from you. But we are rejoicing this morning because we serve a risen Saviour who is in this world today who is at the head of his creation, who lives in the heart of every believer, who is at the head of his church, and indeed, uh, who is interceding for each and every one of us here at this very moment uh, in heaven. And so we thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your word. We pray that through this uh, short uh, uh, meditation this morning that we will be able to hear you speaking to us, not only here, but seek to apply the truths thereof to our daily walk with you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have you ever noticed that during lockdown, because of the coronavirus pandemic, food has become an even bigger part of our lives? than it was before. I often find myself asking my wife what we will be eating for dinner when I place my knife and fork down on the plate after just finishing lunch. Meal times have become a real event in the dislocated lives we've been leading. Have you ever noticed how much the Bible deals with food? Sin comes through food, or perhaps I should say fruit, in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. Israel's exodus from bondage in Egypt is remembered with a Passover meal. Food laws make the Israelites distinct from their surrounding people. In the New Testament, Jesus was uh, known for meeting people while eating a, a meal with them. Um, it says the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Jesus is sacrifice is remembered through the Lord's Supper in Luke chapter 22. And we are told history will culminate with a wedding feast of the Lamb in the last book of uh, the Bible, the uh, book of Revelation, uh, chapter 19 and verse 9. So this morning I want us to turn to Matthew chapter 5 um, and verse 6, which says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Jesus is teaching in his famous Sermon on the Mount. His audience is primarily made up of Jews, but it is equally relevant to all of us today who seek to follow the Lord. It says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those who hunger then. This describes a profound hunger that cannot be satisfied by a mere snack. This is a longing that endures and is never completely satisfied on this side of eternity. This passion is real, just like hunger and thirst are real. This passion is natural, just like hunger and thirst are natural in a healthy person. This passion is intense, just like hunger and thirst can, can be. This passion can be painful, just like real hunger and thirst can cause pain. 
This passion is a driving force, just like hunger and thirst can drive a man or woman. This passion is a sign of health, just like hunger and thirst show health. And so we have the hunger and thirst for righteousness. We see Christians hungering for many things, power, authority, success, comfort, happiness. But how many of us hunger and thirst for righteousness? It is good to remember that Jesus said this in a day and to a culture that really knew what it was to be hungry and thirsty. Modern man, at least in the Western world, is often so distant from the basic needs of hunger and thirst that they also find it difficult to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Mind you, having said that, it's been uh, sad, hasn't it, to see that during the lockdown, uh, and prior to that, in fact, we've had to open up food banks for families who are struggling uh, to get enough food on the table. Um, we do pray uh, and thank God for the food banks that have opened, but we would also like to see them end quickly, of course. So, um, it is difficult uh, uh, for people to understand in this part of the world um, the, the pain and the problems caused by hunger and thirst. Um, it, people often say it's not enough for me to know that my sin is forgiven. I have a fountain of sin within my heart and bitter waters continually flow from it. Um, or oh, that my nature could be changed so that I, the lover of sin, could be made a lover of that which is good. That I, now full of evil, could become full of holiness. That's the heartfelt cry of all of us. It was beautifully expressed in those words by Charles Spurgeon. How does this hunger and thirst for righteousness express itself? Well, a man longs to have a righteous nature. He wants to be sanctified, to be made more holy. He longs to continue in God's righteousness. He longs to see righteousness promoted in the world. He hungers and thirsts after righteousness. He does not hunger and thirst that his own political party may get into power, but he does hunger and thirst that righteousness may be done in the land. He does not hunger and thirst that his own opinions may come to the front, uh, and that his own sect or denomination may increase in number and influence, but he does desire that righteousness may come to the fore. And then we come to that promise, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, of course, that they will be filled. Jesus promised to fill the hungry, to fill them with as much as they could eat. This is a strange filling that both satisfies us and keeps us longing for more. Desire is an inward longing for something we do not have, but feel we need. Hunger and thirst are appetites God gave humans to make us aware of a need. Hunger for God's word and his attributes are the spiritual appetite God gives Christians to make us aware of spiritual needs. Do pray, pagans pray to their idols and ask them for love, joy, internal peace, kindness, gentleness, goodness, meekness, or self-control? No, they ask for other things, material things, material blessings. God has given us faith to make us aware of spiritual needs. 
We are aware of our physical needs by nature, but we would never be aware of these spiritual needs unless God, by His Spirit, makes us aware. It is a loving gift from Him. He expects us to think about these needs and ask Him for them. Our very awareness of the need is a proof that God is working with us. This adds another step to the process, doesn't it, of answered prayer. There has to be an awareness of need followed by the desire to have what we need. The desire moves us to make it known to God. And if it is really earnest and fervent, it fixes our minds on the object of our longing, motivating our pursuit of it. In other words, desire sets the will into action. What God really wants us to seek after, to desire, is Him. Who are you seeking after today? Are you hungering and thirsting for material things or for spiritual things? I would say your greatest need today is for Jesus. There's no argument about that. We've all found that. Those of us who have followed the Lord down through the years know that there's no substitute for Jesus in our lives and so I once again would appeal to you this morning that if you don't know Jesus well why don't you ask him into your heart and your life today why don't you pray this simple prayer with me dear Lord Jesus thank you for dying on the cross for my sin Please forgive me. Come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Saviour. Now help me to live for you the rest of this life. In the name of Jesus, I pray this. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer sincerely, and you're wondering what to do next as a new Christian, there are some things that you can do. Salvation is by grace through faith. There's nothing you did or even can do to, de to deserve it. Salvation is a free gift from God. All you have to do is receive it. Tell someone today about your decision. It's important that you tell someone to make it public, to make it secure, to make it firm. Find a brother or sister in the Lord and tell him or her. Why don't you say to them, look, something really marvellous has happened to me today. I have made a decision to follow Jesus. Tell someone today, it's a great way to seal the deal, as they say. And then talk to God every day. You don't have to use big, fancy words. There are no right and wrong words. Just be yourself. Thank the Lord daily for your salvation. Pray for others in need. Seek his direction. Pray for the Lord to fill you daily with his Holy Spirit. There is no limit to prayer. You can pray with your eyes closed or open, while sitting or standing, kneeling or lying on your bed, anywhere, anytime. And lastly, I would urge you, to contact your local gospel preaching church. 
and speak to the pastor or one of the leaders and let them know that you've accepted Jesus into your heart and your life. And they will be so pleased to help you, to love you, to encourage you, to nurture you in the faith and to, to welcome you into the, their fellowship. Uh, and uh, if, of course, if you live in Newbridge, uh, well, please contact the minister or leaders of Tabernacle Baptist Church, and they will be only too delighted to speak to you, to encourage you, to pray with you, and uh, to nurture you in the faith. Uh, you know, it's the best way uh, to maintain uh, faith in Jesus is to be part of his family which is his church here on earth so God bless you may God bless you and your family uh, today let's turn to the Lord then in prayer Heavenly Father we thank you again for uh, this time when we've been able to consider your word uh, and Lord, we do indeed hunger and thirst after righteousness. And we do pray that you will help us to be faithful to you and to walk um, in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, we do thank you for all the blessings you have poured out upon us down through our lives. Uh, and we thank you that your word is powerful. It's like a two-edged sword. And we do ask, Lord, that you can show us today uh, how we can better serve you. Lord, we do lift up uh, those who have special needs again. We do pray for those who are going through the valley of the shadow of death. We do pray for those who are very sick in hospital, some still suffering from uh, coronavirus and uh, others with more serious with with other serious illnesses as well lord bless them lord help them lord put your healing hand upon them we do pray also uh, for the ones who are looking after them we pray for our doctors and nurses and uh, all of the ancillary workers who are working so hard uh, to help them during these challenging days. To pray for our elderly, particularly those in homes for the elderly. We just ask, Lord, that you will comfort them and be with them because so many are still waiting uh, to see uh, their loved ones for the first time and to be with their loved ones after, well, more than a year probably. So, Lord, we just pray for our elderly people as well. And then, Father, we pray for this nation of ours in Wales uh, and in the United Kingdom. We pray for our leaders, our politicians in Westminster and in Cardiff Bay. We ask that you will give them wisdom and uh, help them to be compassionate uh, to the needs of those around us. We thank you for uh, what uh, the governments have been able to do to help alleviate some of the uh, financial problems which uh, we've been seeing uh, but Lord much more needs to be done and so we do pray that the right decisions will be made that the just decisions will be made and that there there will be help available for all those who are finding uh, this uh, crisis uh, such a, a huge huge challenge at the moment and then father uh, we do uh, finally pray for ourselves lord we need you we need your help we need your strength uh, we need uh, your guidance we need your wisdom uh, and, and lord we just pray as we always do that you will um, make us a faithful people that we will support and encourage one another that we will uh, not be ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we will 
read our Bibles diligently every day, that we will pray every day, that we will um, fellowship uh, one with another every day, even if it's only by a simple telephone call or a card, whatever it may be. Lord, help us uh, to be encouragers in these difficult days. And then, Father, finally, uh, we do pray uh, that your kingdom will come. Uh, you have promised that uh, uh, you are coming again. Uh, and so we we look forward to that great day when either we this earthly life will come to an end and we will be with you in glory, or when you come again to this world and you are coming because you always keep the promises that we find in your word. So thank you again for being with us today. We ask these things in Jesus' lovely name. Amen.